in this microprocessor and microcontroller lecture i shall cover the topics introduction of microprocessor generation of processor architecture view of microprocessor and pin description of microprocessor first what is microprocessor a microprocessor is a semiconductor component that incorporates the functions of a central processing units on a single integrated ic that is the central processing unit built on a single ic called microprocessor then how it works microprocessor is a multi purpose programmable and clock driven register based electronic device that reads binary instructions from a storage device called memory accepts binary data as input process the data according to the instructions and provides results as output next about the evaluation of microprocessor microprocessor evaluation is classified into five generations the first generation in the year 1971 to 1973 the first microprocessor the 4004 was introduced in the year 1971 it was developed by intel and japanese manufacturer of calculators the 4 bit 4004 microprocessor working at a speed of 108 kilohertz and contain 2300 transistors in this processor fabricated using pmos technology which provide low cost low speed and low output current in 1972 intel corporation delivered 8 bit processor that is 8008 and 8080 microprocessor next second generation in the year 1974 to 1978 second generation introduced some popular processors as motorola 6800 and 6809 intel's 8085 and 6 log z80 the second generation devices had speed up to 100 of millions of switching per second they were manufactured using n channel metal oxide semiconductor that is nmos technology This technology offer high density and faster speed than PMOS. The third generation in the year 1978 to 1980, the third generation introduced 16-bit processor in 1978 was developed by Intel's 8086 and Silo Z8000. The third generation came with IC transistor count of about 2 lakh 50000 in Motorola's MC6802 was designed using high density metal oxide semiconductor that is HMAS technology HMAS technology provides some advantage over NMOS its speed power product is four times better than of NMOS next about fourth generation in the year 1981 to 1995 the fourth generation introduced intel 80386 and motorola 68020 68030 that is a 30 bit microprocessor it was designed containing more than million transistors in a single package this all are fabricated using high density high speed complementary metal oxide semiconductor with cmos technology in 1993 introduced intel pentium processor retain the 32 bit address bus of the 80486 but double the data bus to 64 bits next fifth generation the fifth generation in the year 1995 to till date the fifth generation introduced 64 bit microprocessor such as pentium celeron and dual quad core processors working at a speed of 3.5 gigahertz 
In 1999, Intel Pentium 2 processor was designed specifically to process video and graphics data. In 1999, Intel Cellular processor and Intel Pentium 3 processor. In 2000, Intel Pentium 4 processor, that is 64 bit data, 64 GB memory. Various other companies such as Motorola, Siemens, Toshiba and Texas Instruments are also manufacture processor chips. Next, what is microprocessor? The microprocessor is a hatch of the microprocessor based system. It is also called a central processing unit. It consists of ALU, registers and control units. The features of 8085 microprocessor are 8085 is an 8-bit microprocessor. It is a 40-pin dual inline package single chip IC. It operates on a single plus 5 volts power supply. It can operate with a 3 MHz clock frequency. It has 16 address lines, so 64 kilobytes of memory. It provides 8-bit I.O. addresses to access 256 I.O. ports. It has 5 flag registers. It has 5 hardware interrupts. It provides control signals to control the bus cycle. It provides SID and SOD line for serial communications. It has a 16-bit program counter and a 16-bit stack pointer. It has 6 8-bit general purpose registers, namely B, C, D, E, H and L register. 8085 is an 8-bit microprocessor as it operates on 8-bit at a time and is created with NMOS technology. This microprocessor exhibits some unique characteristics and this is the reason it still holds the popularity among the microprocessor. Basically, 8085 was the first commercially successful microprocessor by Intel. As some of the architectural drawbacks associated with 8080 was also eliminated by 8085. The size of the data bus of 8085 is 8 bits, while that of the address bus is 16. Therefore, it can address 64 kilobytes, that is 2 power 16. So, it can address 64 kilobytes of memory. Also, it can perform 8-bit operation, thus the size of ALU is also 8-bit. It also provides operational advantages as 8085 needs a single plus 5 volts supply with only one clock cycle of width 320 nanoseconds, while 8080 requires 3 power supply lines and 2 clock signals of 500 nanoseconds. The architecture of 8085 microprocessor provides the idea uh, about what are the operations to be executed and how these are performed. It can perform the operations that it operates on and stores 8-bit data. It, it executes arithmetic and logical operations. 8085 also sequences the instruction to be executed. It stores data temporarily. However, in order to perform all such operations, the processor needs a control unit, arithmetic logic unit, registers, buses, and etc. The basic function of the microprocessor is fetch, decode, and execute. That is, it fetch the instructions from the memory or I.O. port. And the instructions are stored in the instructions register and it will be decoded by the instructions decoder. Then it is given to the executional unit and the processing unit ALU. The data and instructions are stored in the memory. The instructions fetch from the memory and it will be stored in the instruction register. The instructions decoded in the instructions decoder and it is given to the ALU unit. And the data 
that will be stored in the register that may be temporary register or general purpose register then before execution one of the operand is stored in the accumulator then another one is stored in the temporary register these two will be delivered to the alu then after execution it will be stored in the psw that is program status bar or the flag register at the same time the answer is stored in the accumulator then it is written to the memory again the architecture has number of registers some temporary register general purpose register then special purpose registers some of the special purpose registers are accumulator then serial input output control interrupt controller then timing and control then stack pointer program counter then alu then this is 40 pin ic then in interrupt controller five hardware interrupts available then serial input output control one input and one output pin is available in timing and control signals the timing signals that is clock out uh, that is x1 and x2 it provide the input signal then control signals that is read write based upon the status signal s0 s1 that is it will be uh, from the memory or io device that can be displayed in the io and memory bar then in direct memory access cases hold and hold acknowledgement pin is used then program counter it will be store the address of the current instruction uh, that is fetched from the memory or the next uh, or the address of the next instruction that can fetch from the memory the stack pointer it is the address of memory that is top of the address of the stack the register section categorized as a three sections that is temporary register general purpose register and special purpose register first temporary register it is an 8 bit register it is used to store the data temporarily when ALU performs the computing functions. In 8085 microprocessor, there are three temporary 8-bit registers. One is used during calculation to keep data temporarily and then move it to the destination. The other two, the namely W and Z temporary registers are used to hold data or address temporarily during execution of some instructions. Next, general purpose registers. General purpose registers are used for temporary storage of data and intermediate results while the microprocessor is executing a program. It has six 8-bit general purpose registers. They are B, C, D, E and H, L. They are paired as B, C, D, E, HL register pairs are used to hold the 16 bit data. Then some of the special purpose registers are available in 8085 microprocessor. They are accumulator, instruction register and decoder, program counter, stack pointer and flag register. First one is accumulator. Accumulator is an 8 bit register. It is the part of the ALU, that is arithmetic and logical unit. It is used to store 8 bit data and to perform arithmetic and logical operation. It is also called as a A register. Next, instruction register and decode. The instruction register is an 8 bit register. Instruction registers are used to load the instructions when an instruction is fetched from the memory. 
the instruction decoder decodes the content of the instruction register and gives the suitable timing and control signals. The next one is program counter. The program counter is a 16-bit register. It is a special purpose register. It is used to call the memory address of the next instruction to be executed. Depends on the execution, program counter modifies. Next, stack pointer. The stack pointer is a 16-bit register. It is used as a memory pointer. It is used to hold the address of the top element of the stack. The stack pointer that is used to point the top of the stack. Next, flag registers. Flag register is an 8-bit register. In an arithmetic operations, the flag registers are set that is equal to 1 or reset that is equal to 0. It is also called a flip flop. It has five flags that is sign flag, zero flag, an axillary carry flag, parity flag and carry flag. First sign flag. In an arithmetic operation if bit D7 of the result is 1, the sign flag is set. Otherwise it is reset. The zero flag, in an arithmetic operation, if bit D6 of a result is zero, the zero flag is set, otherwise it is reset. Then axillary carry flag, in an arithmetic operation, when a carry is generated by digit D3 and passes to digit D4, the axillary carry flag is set, otherwise it is reset. The party flag in an arithmetic operations, if the result has an even number of ones, the party flag is set. If the result has an odd number of ones, the flag is reset. The last one is carry flag. In an arithmetic operation, when carry is generated, the carry flag is set. Otherwise, it is reset. Next, arithmetic and logical sections. The arithmetic logic unit performs the arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, increment, decrement, and logical operations such as AND, OR, and EXA. It is an 8 bit register. Then timing and control unit. The timing and control unit is used to synchronize all the functions of the microprocessor. The timing and control section of microprocessor includes an oscillator and it produces clock signals for necessary communication between the microprocessor and peripherals. The interrupts in A085 the interrupt control accepts the interrupt signals coming from the external device and it controls the interrupt activity of 8085 microprocessor. It has five interrupt signals, namely trap, reset, 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 and INTR. It has five interrupt signals, namely trap, RST 7.5, RST 6.5, RST 5.5 and interrupt request. Then serial input and output control. The serial input output control is used to connect the serial data from I.O. devices. SID that is serial input data gives the serial data as an input. SOD that is serial output data gives the serial data to the output device. This diagram shows the pin details of 8085 microprocessor. 
these signals of 8085 can be classified into seven groups according to their functions namely power supply and clock signals address bus data bus control and status signals interrupts and externally initiated signals serial io ports direct memory access that is dm first power supply and clock frequency signals vcc it requires a single plus 5 volts power supply the pin number is 40 then vss that is the ground reference the pin number is 20 then x1 and x2 these are also called crystal input pins x085 can generate clock signals internally to generate clock signals internally x085 requires external inputs from x1 and x2 Crystal frequency to operate a system at 3 MHz, the crystal should have a frequency of 6 MHz. Then clock out signal. This signal can be used as the system clock for other devices. Then address bus. The higher order address lines A8 to A15 are connected in the pin number from 21 to 28. Three state higher order address bus. These address lines are entered into tri-stated high impedance stage during hold and halt modes. It carries the most significant 8 bits of the memory address or the 8 bits of the I.O. address. Then multiplexed address and data bus. The lower order address and lower order data is multiplexed together. The pin number from 19 to 12. Three state multiplexed address and data bus. They are used as the low order address bus as well as the data bus. These multiplexed set of lines used to carry the lower order 8 bit address as well as data bus. During the opcode fetch operation, in the first clock cycle, the lines deliver the lower order address A0 to A7. In the subsequent input output, Memory, read and write clock cycles, the lines are used as data bus. The CPU may read or write out data through these lines. Then control signals, ALE, that is the address latch enable. This signal is used to latch to low order address from the multiplexed bus and generate a separate set of 8 address lines A7 to A0. This signal helps to capture the lower order address presented on the multiplexed address and data bus. Then read, that is the active low output signal. The signal, the read signal indicates that the selected I.O. or memory device. X right, this is active low output signal. The right signal indicates that the data on the data bus are to be written into a selected memory or I.O. location. Then I.O. slash M bar, this is a status signal used to differentiate between I.O. and memory operation. Where I.O. slash Memory bar is equal to 1 indicates an I.O. operation. When is equal to 0, it indicates a memory operation. Then status signals. The S0 and S1 are status signals used to specify the various operations. It is used to know the type of current operation. If it is 0, 0, 
means no operation. If it is 0, 1, the right to the memory or I.O. unit. If it is on 0, the read from the memory or I.O. unit. Then if it is on 1, the instruction fit, fit carried out. Next, interrupt signals. They are the signals initiated by an external device to request the microprocessor to do the particular task. There are five hardware interrupts, namely trap, RST 7.5, 6.5, 5.5 and interrupt. Trap, it is a non-maskable interrupt and it has the highest priority. Then, restart interrupts. These three inputs have the same timing as interrupt request. They are RST 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5. Then, interrupt acknowledgement, INTA, it is used to acknowledge and interrupt. INTR, it is an input signal. Interrupt request, it is a general purpose interrupt request signal. Then reset in and reset out. When the signal on this pin goes low, the program counter is set to zero and the processor is reset. In reset out, this signal indicates that the microprocessor unit is being reset. This signal can be used to reset other devices. Next, SID and SOD, serial input data and serial output data pins. First, SID, this input signal is used to accept serial data bit by bit from the external device. It takes one bit input from serial port of 8085. It stores the bit at the 8th position that is MSB of the accumulator. This read interrupt mask instruction is used to transfer the bit of data. Then SOD, serial output data. This is an output signal which enables the transmission of serial data bit by bit to the external device. It takes one bit from accumulator to serial port of 8085. It takes the bit from the 8th position, MSB from of the accumulator. Set interrupt mask instruction, SIM instruction is used to transfer the bit. Then interrupt. The interrupt is an asynchronous process of communication with the microprocessor initiated by an external peripheral devices. It means interrupting the normal execution of the microprocessor. The 8085 microprocessor allows peripheral devices to interrupt the main program for I.O. operation. When an interrupt occurs, the 8085 microprocessor completes the instruction. It is currently executing and transfer the program control to a subroutine services. After completion of the service routine, the microprocessor unit returns to the main program. Next, direct memory access, DMA. The hold and hold acknowledgement pins are used in DMA. The hold input signal, the signal indicates that a peripheral such as a DMA controller is requesting the use of the address and data buses. The whole acknowledgement, this signal acknowledges the whole request by sending the HLDA signal and leaves out the control of the buses. After the HLDA signal, the DMA controller starts the direct transfer of data. Next, ready signal, that is the input signal. The signal is used to delay the microprocessor read or write operation and also ready to send or accept data. 
the microprocessor remains in wait state until the input at this pin goes low. This is the overall pin details and signal group of 8085 microprocessor. There's some basic applications of microprocessor in general life. There are lot of applications of microprocessor in general life. Some of the applications are mobile phones, digital watches, washing machine, traffic lights, modems, power stations, televisions, CD player, multimeter, CRO, overall the home appliances. Thank you.